welcome to the Embodiment Conference. This is truly an epic event that is raising awareness and revealing just how much is happening in the world of embodiment. And this gives me hope about where we're heading as a people. I'm Amara Pagano. I'm the founder of Azul, a conscious movement path of personal transformation. I work with the body and the power of movement to awaken love and consciousness. Embodiment is a key to my work. And the journey of embodying the map of Azul is what facilitates the process of self-realization. I'm excited to sponsor the Dance and Creativity Channel to share my love of movement and to celebrate the power that it has to serve our collective evolution. If you are interested in awakening your deepest potential or curious about the spiritual and healing aspects of embodiment, I encourage you to check out Azul. Everyone is welcome. I work with people who love movement and people who have never moved. Follow the link and you'll find three gifts for you. A 50-minute Azul journey, a special discount on our online embodiment training, and a free month in our upcoming membership program. So come, check out the Path of Azul. I'll be presenting on the main stage here and in the Dance and Creativity channel, and I hope to see you there. For now, enjoy the richness of the presentation you're about to see. We have Matt sharing with us, who is going to be with us here on the Dance and Creativity channel to give us a little bit more insight to human-centered design. Matt is a visual artist and designer and has been one of the lead designers here on the conference. So a lot of the things you've float seen floating about in terms of designing have really been Matt's work. So Matt, it's such a pleasure to have you here. And I'll let you go ahead, introduce yourself a little bit further, and start your session. Brilliant. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, thank you, Alicia, for the lovely introduction. Um, yes, I, I've been working with um, the Embodiment Conference since its inception uh, in the beginning of 2018 and designed the logo, among many other things, for the conference. Um, I've hippie sort of uh, round an ashram, uh, meditation, chanting, and sort of stu studied Buddhist philosophy as part of my degree. Um, I'll, I'll come to the introduction a bit in the slide. Um, but yeah, I, I, these days I do a lot of conscious dance, uh, five rhythms, and during lockdown I, I help sort of take Dancing Tower, sort of our, our dancing collective in sort of London, online onto Zoom and sort of ran, sort of co-facilitated. So I, I'm normally behind the scenes. Um, I'm more of a sort of behind the scenes sort of designer than in front of the camera uh, presenter, but um, <laughs> here I am. Um, yeah, so I'm, I've got a slideshow to talk through um, some of the pieces that I'm working on. So I'm just gonna just fire this up. And then, yeah, so let's go back to the first slide. Um, yeah, so today's session is Design Meets the Body, how perspectives from conscious dance and embodiment coaching integrate with the design process, to develop a more human-centered design. Um, so the first slide, I, I created this, um, it's a sort of famous Dali chair, um, but in some way, I, I've kind of, uh, I was looking, Design is probably about as wide a field as embodiment is. Um, there's, there's many forms of design, but that there's a sort of underlying process that I'm going to come to. And um, today, today's talk will be mainly focused around a couple of models and how I've worked with them in a, a, a more embodied context. So the main model, um, so yeah, so just quickly, um, the, 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 the types of design um, range from industrial graphic design, fashion design, which is very embodied in many ways, probably one of the most embodied because it listen, you know, it's designing for the body, but the way we interact, architecture, what gives us joy, motion graphics, this is, this is the web design, the user experience, um, industrial design. The one that I, I think uh, I find is the most embodied is a new field and it, it 
came out of kind of a user experience and the work of Dan Norman, I've got a couple of his quotes coming up, but um, it's the field of human centered design, which is, is how the body interacts and how design is becoming a more human, more holistic, more somatic uh, field. Um, so, um, but it, I'm just dropping this slide. So this double diamond, this model was, I think, 2005, um, the UK Design Council created this process and it, it it's actually more iter iterative, so it loops around and then there's other sort of uh, iterative design models that expand it and show it but I love this model because it's um, it's very so I, I've done a lot of embodiment coaching with Mark and I've, I've, um, I've come to the discover stage a little bit and explain a bit more but that I found that this this model of discover define develop deliver is maps brilliantly onto uh, the four element coaching, which with things like movement medicine as a sort of dance form again is a sort of elemental dance and quite quite often I've I've gone through these. So I'll give a quick, I'm gonna go break them down for bit by bit uh, each section, but discover for me is flow, it's uh, water. It's the research and empathy, but it's the listening. So I don't know, I, I'm feeling the tension in my body as I present to a screen, but uh, there's actually listening is, is a, lot of, a, a lot of people that don't work in a sort of more creative process will quite often come in that dotted line in the middle and they will ask you to develop and deliver a solution. Um, one of the things that annoys many non-designers is that when you give a designer a problem, they go backwards. So rather than going into, let's create some ideas and solve them, they'll move backwards to the research and empathy and the discovery. So it's, it, it, in user, user research, uh, market research, it, it's actually discovering the need. So. It's the social listening. Um, let me just drop on to another slide. So, so to discover a little bit about me, um, the first thing that the symbol at the top is actually my signature, which is an ambergram, um, which is a reversible signature. And um, yeah, <laughs> one of the things I'm happiest about in my artistic career is my signature. Um, I'm, I'm one of the lead designers at the Embodiment Conference, um, designed the logo, a lot of the memes and the visual brand identity for the conference. Um, I grew up around ashrams my, with my mum taking me, uh, she used to play the shruti board whilst I was kind of like a babe in uh, swaddling and um, with chanting and meditation in the early 70s. Um, I did an English and Buddhist philosophy degree and got into Ashtanga yoga um, and meditation through Buddha Field in the late 90s. Uh, and then I, also at Buddha Field, I found ecstatic dance with jewels um, and later five rhythms. And I've also practiced Tai Chi since 2007. Um, and I've supported the Embodiment Facilitator course. Uh, I designed its logo in 2014. And I've been, I, although I've never actually done the course itself, I was room team in 2014. And on numerous times I've chefed, um, possibly with the most fun experience was cooking with Paul Linden, sitting at the table, cracking bad jokes. I think that was 2016 maybe. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that, that's a little bit about me. So I thought that's helpful as a discover, we're in the discover stage. So one of the things I'd um, quite, so yeah, I, this is a little slide of, um, it was a, it's actually, I designed, it designed the embodied yoga principles logo for Mark Walsh, um, the, 
Mr. <laughs> Mr. Conference, um, among other things. And this was just a little design sort of package. So I, I went through a few different designs and bounced things off him. And on the end, we settled at the one on the bottom, but just showing you a bit of range of my work. Um, so yeah, so back to the double diamond, this um, discover. Um, I just, I, I found some really good quotes while sort of researching, putting this piece, uh, presentation together. Um, and the discovery stage uh, is, it's all about listening. And that I think is probably one of the most embodied skills possible. Um, so I'm just gonna read this through. Empathy means challenging your preconceived ideas and setting aside your sense of what you, you think is true in order to learn what is actually true. Um, so I think this goes back, it, I, we're so embedded in a system and where we are in the process that it's very hard to actually sort of listen to the people coming through the door for the first time. Um, so one of the things that I thought would be quite nice in the discover stage is just to find a little bit about the people on this call. Um, so I'm just, um, yeah, if you, I've got a couple of questions. So what is your sort of like prime discipline, your movement practice? And also just if you, I'd be great to sort of see in the chat, uh, what graphic element or image conjures up embodiment best to you, which is a, a question I'm often faced with when designing something for an embodiment conference or yoga or movement practice or um, design. So, yeah, I'll just see if I can open up the, uh, the chat. Okay, we've got some dance. I have lots of chat coming in. Um... You know, um, let's see what we have here. Yeah. Um, we have coaches, yoga teachers. I know there's lots of you in this call. Feel free to share learning and instructional design, a yin yoga teacher. Lots of individuals coming hmm. up. Fantastic. Right. Hey. What did you say? Um, designer, educator, um, disciplinary teacher, Kung, imagery for breath, math, and body. Lots of incredible humans. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you for sharing. Appreciated. Um, so, back to the double diamond. Um, where are we? So, define. Um, yeah, so, so. For me, the discover element, it, it's, it's the listening part comes first. And it, it was really interesting sort of working with um, Pete, the UX designer, sort of designing, sort of working on the sort of like the portal at the beginning of sort of before it kind of became what it became, we were, we, we, we had the sort of prototype and we were doing user testing on it. And that a bit, this amazing process, if you haven't done user testing or where you, you walk people, you have one facilitator who basically takes people onto the website whilst there's a few of you in the sort of like, in a sort of chat room, sort of watching what, how people interact and that ability to sort of actually listen to or watch and it kind of, feel into someone experiencing your product for the first time it's uh, it, it kind of it takes away all the sort of bits that are so obvious that you you kind of like you're just moving forward and it was such a a great part of the process actually being able to do some sort of user testing the sort of ux side of um the sort of um build in some ways it was kind of that was more interesting than sort of like you know choosing some colors and making some designs um so so once you've done uh the sort of like the social listening and sort of kind of gone into the field and so in dance that 
you know, that, that's flow. So quite often the sort of flow, it's movement, the sort of like the beginnings. It's I, I find, I mean, I love dancing in flow at the beginning of the sort of five rhythms dance or water. It's like, it's, it's a very sort of, it, it's becoming wider. And one of the ways to double, let's go back to the double dime. One of the, the things about the double diamond is it has this shape of the heartbeat, um, the, the valves in the heart. So it's an opening, and closing so both water the discover part and then further when we get to, to develop which I, I see as air and ideation are these kind of opening to the wider possibilities so there's there's a sense of opening and breadth and listening and expansiveness to them and then from that we m move into definition defining um, which is a, is a kind of more closed process. So I don't know if anyone on the call's done sort of four elements coaching, but where water is a sort of swirl and expressive and fluid, earth definition, it, it's often a, a slow staccato step, 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 stop and then turn to 90 degrees and you walk step, step, step. It, I find it, I, I'm quite a, an air water type and I, I find earth can be so boring. Um, and in design, it's the part where you remember to name your layers and it's the part where you set up a spreadsheet and you have a mandate for the spreadsheet and you make sure that everyone is using the same protocol. Um, it's, it's also quite often one of the handover pieces. So quite often if you're doing a, uh, a creative project, the creative brief where you actually start breaking down what are the requirements, when's the deadline, what, who are the, sort of stakeholders who do you need to kind of get the assets to at the end of the delivery process and quite often this can be one of the hardest bits because it's like everyone just wants to see the design but you know you we've had this thing where we're designing e email banners and the people sending them out like we don't know the, de the size it's like okay <laughs> we'll just do something um but yeah it's uh it's it's probably the most boring part of um, the creative process, but as I'll come to in a second, I, I'll tie it into dance. But um, the quote on the screen, um, so, so this is from 1983, so very much the beginnings of the, sort of the computer age in a way. And it's a, it's a great book, uh, Victor Papanek's Design for the Real World, which is a real kind of call from sort of more ecological and sustainable and socially uh, integrated design. Um, so I'll read it. Design must be an innovative, highly creative, cross-disciplinary tool responsive to needs. It must be more research orientated and we must stop defiling the earth with poorly designed objects and structures. So I see this in a way that the sense that if we're not listening to needs at the first part, the design process can quite often just go off and build something with no, where there isn't actually an audience and there's been no conceptual testing or no, sort of, no, no sprint to actually see if you can get a prototype out. Um, so, that was where it was in 1983. And I, I was, when I was reading it, he's talking about the internet kind of complaining about the fact that it's so hard to read green type on a black screen. This is the point he's at. This jumps forwards through some more, this, uh, this the iterative design process that's kind of uh, the more modern sort of empathize, define, IDA prototype test, which is kind of related to the uh, double diamond that I'm doing, but there's a kind of test that kind of links it back in um, to what is, is called, uh, to a field of design that I, I'm, I'm fascinated by. Um, and it, it, it's kind of 
human-centered design, UX, human factors, they're, they're all the sort of like the forefront of the, the design uh, sort of world. But it's, it is that integration between sort of more somatic and sort of semiotic kind of understanding. Um, human-centered design developed solutions to problems by involving the human perspective in all of the problem solving process. Human involvement typically takes place in observing the problem within context, brainstorming, conceptualizing, developing and implementing the solution. Um, so yeah, uh, it, <laughs> quite a lot there, uh, but um, it, it's the involving the human's perspective uh, all the steps of the problem, uh, all the steps of the process, and the human design, human-centered design, kind of came about. Um, there's a, it's, it's probably the design classic, um, the design of everyday things by Dan Norman, um, and the, the actual quote I've got here is is from his revised edition, as, as he. He starts looking at the more kind of a new book, he, or newer book, he talks about emotional design. So it's, it's very much kind of like the integration of rather than kind of like this engineering process that creates a sort of dry sort of like functionality. It's bringing sort of, sort of like the soul that sort of into design process. Um, so yeah, this quote from Dan Norman, the total experience of a product covers much more than its usability. Aesthetics, pleasure and fun play critically important roles. There was no discussion of pleasure, enjoyment and emotion in his earlier book. Emotion is so important, the role it plays in design. Um, so yeah, I think the, the human centered design field is, is, is fascinating for how it is building towards this. Um, so I've, I've got a couple of sort of uh, examples. Um, the first is sort of how ergonomic design is actually working with the body. Um, one of the really interesting sort of things I, I sort of discovered <laughs> doing research for this was that ergonomic mean it, it's to do with sort of like design for work. So it's quite interesting that that the process is designed for work objects, but actually the sort of like the bigger human experience is only just starting to kind of like sort of be, but yeah, I think ergonomics was sort of created in the fifties and under, starting to understand the process of posture. Um, I've got a, a designer friend who's a film editor and he's got a wobble board that he's sort of like a balance board that he sort of stands up with his stand up desk. I was like, ooh, <laughs> that's definitely, you know, that, that sort of like the, the, the ability to kind of constantly be sort of micro balancing. Um, but yeah, so, so on, on the left is the image of, um, the sort of a vertical ergonomic mouse that is like well, is better for instead of getting repetitive strain using a sort of unnatural posture it's looking at how design fits the body and um, the middle example is a is a classic it, it, it's more almost more psychological design but um it's an example of a process called priming so in an emergency situation you want the stop button to be large and red and easily accessible. And the start button is clear, it's green, but it's not necessarily as accessible because you, you're probably less likely to need it in an emergency. Um, and then finally, it's, it's a kind of user experience classic that quite often there's a design, the design process will build a product and the user will come along and the, the way they use the product and the way it's intended to be used are quite different. And only really by doing that user testing at the, the beginning of the process with an early prototype, can you avoid building these sort of grand structures that aren't going to be used as intended. So that, I, I, in fact, those are my kind of three design examples for, um, yeah, just how, design at is meeting the body um, and then whilst we're still um, in definition 
I, I uh, one of my favorite teachers, Gabrielle Roth, uh, the inventor of the five rhythms. It's a, a kind of much used quote, but it, it feels very relevant. It takes discipline to be a free spirit. Um, and I think this kind of keeps coming back that un unless you put the hours in at the dojo doing the falls and doing the move, unless you're at the ballet studio practicing your sort of point, it's like the, the artist gets to their, their ability to fly almost by doing the earth. And there's kind of very interesting, I was dancing a couple of days ago and I had this real, the polarity between earth and air earth to me is this it's like it's it's your feet in the soil it's that that sort of it's actually having the stability and the groundedness to be able to know that you can reach upwards into the kind of creative ideas and expressive um, ideation and how about this and this and this but it only works when that axis is grounded in a discipline. Um, it's so many artists, it's like, it's putting the hours in, in the studio to actually then the moment that you see of the kind of the grand reveal in a way comes from this, this kind of actually putting the practice in it's the practice it's the practice it's the practice um so i felt this it was kind of interesting kind of like the relation between dance again and and design of it's i think there's i think it's the next quote i think i haven't got that quote but there's yeah just being able to to hone your design and to, to kind of find that actual what are the requirements what's needed to be able to then go into what most people think of as the creative process um so most of the the kind of creativity it comes into the development stage coming up um the next slide is it's it's such uh, like this this is the I mean, I love this part. This is where um, the, the, there's a question in the design sprint, um, which is a, a Google Ventures way of kind of getting to quick solutions. This ideation: how might we? How might we create a so like it's the it's the problem solving, but it's grounded in the kind of conciseness of knowing what your requirements are that you can then expand into developing a solution um one of the things i i can never quite <laughs> the language around development it it's designed thinking it's brainstorm it's idea it's it's the brain taxi as um francis bryce <laughs> used to call it it's like it how do we take design thinking and become more embodied in our design? That's, and how do we find a language for a more somatic design? I, I'm not sure, but it's interesting. It's like thinking outside the box, brainstorming idea. Um, but again, going back to um, one of my favorite authors, Dan Norman, Donald Norman. Um, when people are anxious, they tend to narrow their thought processes. Concentra concentration upon aspects directly relevant to a problem. This is a useful strategy in escaping from danger, but not necessarily in a thinking of imaginative new approaches to a problem. Um, so I think that sort of like that second half of to, to be imaginative, you have to be open and it's, it's air for me moving embodiment, like in a kind of like embodiment four element workshop this would be where it's kind of very popcorn air it's it's ideas and doing some improv you can you a couple of minutes walking around a room just naming things as quickly without thinking thinking think it's like you, you get into this process and it it's the lyrical in the dance in many ways of kind of like you've you've peeked into chaos which is that kind of dotted line in the middle and you start finding this 
this, ooh, ah, it's, yeah, very, I mean, I, uh, that, the lyrical, the, that sort of creative space is, it's such a, a wonderful place to kind of be. But one of the things that really interests me with this quote is it's so related to polyvagal theory. I mean, the next quote, um, Stephen Porges, um, the detection of a person as safe or dangerous triggers neurobiologically determined pre pro social or defensive uh, behaviors. Even though we may not always be aware of a danger on a cognitive level or on a neurophysiological level, our body has already started a sequence of neural processes that would facilitate adaptive defense behaviors such as flight, fight, or freeze. I just, I love the fact, the, I love how these two very different fields are looking at how, how there's a kind of openness and I, I've trained quite a bit. I've been very lucky to have the opportunity to kind of work with Paul Linden, um, one of Mark's mentors and being in movement, his, his sort of like teachings, I think I've got, I might have a quote later on, but I, I was trying to find it. It's that, that ability to center. So quite, I, I don't know if any of you have trained or done any of Paul's work, but there's the, the classic examples that he throws a tissue at you or you get, you get him working pairs and you throw a tissue and you're calibrating up. What's your trigger mechanism? So it might be a word, it might be an arm grab, but there's this kind of, where in your body do you feel that slightest so quite often it would be your toes curling or your maybe a frown across the forehead where in stress when you hear the word email or sort of like the portals down or whatever that stressor is that's kind of like primed to kind of like be or kind of like put you into a fight or flight where in the body does that come i mean it, it's such an amazing practice and then using sort of like centering abc awareness balance core release that sort of softening of the belly breathing out breathing to the forwards backwards above below to the to that kind of expansiveness and paul talks very much about this in embodied peacemaking of how to respond to an aggressive response. And it's by actually opening up and then that being mirrored. So you, you basically in an aggressive situation, confront, conflict, you need to kind of be able to, like the, the process of disarming it is to be able to get the person coming from conflict to open. And it's, it's so interesting how this is coming from both a design world of looking at how we can be more open to possibilities and develop in this kind of creative space and also Stephen Borges at polyvagal theory talking about exactly the same thing about fight or flight freeze um, so yeah 35 minutes 30 minutes in um, so one of the uh, whilst in, in development um develop uh, one of the the questions that's used most is how might we i touched on this a little bit earlier but it's used in uh jake knapp's uh, book sprint um design sprints uh, it's agile scrums and kanban board so on the right um, is a Kanban board that was actually, this is quite, quite a funny story. Um, I was cooking on Mark's Embodiment Facilitator course uh, for about 30 people, I think, in a sort of big stately home down in uh, Somerset. And 
I, I've been doing quite a lot with these to do, doing, done sort of Kanban boards, which is a, a very, it's a kind of basic way of prioritizing a backlog that a lot of kind of more agile teams, it's kind of classic, you can use Trello or there's all kinds of, sort of ways of doing, creating a sort of a backlog. And a backlog is, is a kind of breaking down the tasks that need doing into these sort of granular pieces that you can move and then the team can basically move them across from whatever's at the top of to do is the most important thing and you move it across to somebody puts it in the that's their job and then when it's done that's their backlog it kind of goes into the backlog to make sure it can be there and tested and back through but um i think it was two years ago on mark's uh embodied facilitator course i i, I ran pretty much a silent kitchen by the end of it um with people sort of studying embodiment facilitation but on, there were a couple of days where they were sort of like in sort of silence over breaks and work periods and I used the Kanban board so I, I broke down the ingredients of each meal with different colours so like the salad would be green and the bits prep that needed prepping and I'd put like potatoes, onions, carrots, you know, lentil and they would just be a post-it note on the to-do list and the sort of the the service kind of period where the sort of um, the people on the course would come in for their hour helping in the kitchen and I could just point them at the Kanban board and say take the top post-it note put it in the doing one and it would have like a description of how much was needed and it was the smoothest experience of running a kit a sort of a retreat kitchen that I've ever had so that's kind of interesting sort of uh my use of it um but I don't know if anyone here has had any experience of doing design sprints but there's there's a really good sort of 90 minute version that's just come out from it's company AJN Smart where they've broken so the design sprint is a five-day process where you get the whole team on board and you you brain it's together alone you come up with an idea everyone writes it down and then everyone has dots that they vote with it and you you basically have an impact effort scale so you'll you'll write your ideas and then they'll figure out which one is the highest impact with the lowest effort and that's what they work to and it's this kind of really creative design modern sort of design sort of field um that is now sort of been broken down into like a 90 minute workshop so um, kind of finding that kind of quite an interesting um sort of like way of facilitating and I, I there's a lot of embodied facilitation I, in in the embodiment field but sometimes some of the more kind of agile lean kaizen processes are kind of a little bit aren't as understood and i one of my my kind of sort of I, sort of niche i think to actually bring this more into embodiment and sort of work with it as a kind of sort of cross-functional interdisciplinary field um so yeah so i don't i'm not sure hang, it's kind of a bit less sort of embodiment but just a quick rundown so i don't know how much people know about design but it, it many processes used to be waterfall so waterfall is where you have a line manager and they have a line manager and there's a kind of somebody sitting at the top and you basically build to a set of requirements and you release it and then at the end of releasing it after maybe two years you find out whether or not you'd released the right thing um it's been much replaced in the kind of software development fields by agile um, which is kind of smaller teams more flexible kind of prototyping very early the minimum viable product that you can get to market and this you know in embodiment terms this might be trying something out on zoom as a class seeing if you know at the beginning of lockdown i ran a shamanic journeying class to see if there was if it would work and kind of work people went on really cool journeys but the drumming just didn't work on zoom so i kind of dropped that one and got back to five rhythms but it was kind of you know that kind of like how might we let's see kind of sometimes you can do you know in the sort of we don't have to put a vast amount of resources before you can prototype a session um 
and one of the things I find really interesting about like the Agile Manifesto, which kind of was again this sort of new software development, is it, it's very much this individuals and interactions over processes and tools. The first kind of key part, it's like it's it's to do with how we interact. And I mean, it's a bit tricky because it's all about face to face meetings, the best way of communications, which I think we've all now in the last six months realized need it's actually we're having to but like the rise of video calling and sort of video meetings which just wasn't there five years ago as a kind of workflow um so yeah i just kind of drop it, it's not it's not the kind of most <laughs> i don't want to go too much into agile versus waterfall because it's not as much but it, there is i think the kind of agile is this more iterative kind of connected design that is is more sort of um uh, available as a thing so yeah so just in the development um I, we've got about 20 minutes left one of the things i actually found really i, I did this as a, a sort of a, a previous workshop on zoom so it's slightly different design but there's there's an exercise called how might we um which it's, well, it's called it's called the crazy eights um, and you have basically, I mean, the, the classic um, Google one is you have eight minutes, but I, I feel maybe we can sort of do five minutes. But if the idea is to get a notepad or a, preferably a sheet of A4 paper and to draw a grid. So it's, you, you divide the sheet up into eight pieces and you literally, just you have a minute um, and hopefully I've got one on Insight Timer set up as a crazy eight. But yeah, if, if people, I think I'm just, uh, as a kind of little creative exercise, let's, if, if you can go and just grab a piece of paper or, and a pen, preferably an A4 piece of paper and a Sharpie, but <laughs> whatever you have, um, even if it's just your phone. And I'm gonna just ring a bell um, let me actually go old school. Um, so I'm going to just ring a bell every minute uh, for, I think actually, yeah, let's go eight minutes. And I think then we can then have some, just open it up to the floor on questions and people's responses. So the, the exercise is this design charrettes, um, think about design and what you need to design and you've now got eight i'll ring about once a minute minute and just write your ideas so it's it's a creative so maybe sort of let's get shake off i've been talking to a screen to people that can't necessarily see so we're all in our in our own worlds in our little rooms but let's get a bit more interactive so maybe just yeah just kind of stand up have a shake I'm gonna just put on a stopwatch um, and yeah just so the, the task is is just write in each of the eight boxes like what do you need to design um, how might how might we so, so yeah, frame the question how might we design a, uh, like your your yoga class it's like how might you you design a better kind of communication like how might your design communicate better so it's just how might we and i'm going to give us i'm going to sort of ring the bell now for the first of the eight minutes i'm going to join in and then maybe we can put some of them in the trap so.
So that's your first minute up. Box number two. That's the end of the second minute to the third box. How might we? The end of the third minute, on to the fourth. How might we? So halfway through the fifth one, how might we? The end of the fifth one, onto the sixth box. How might we, how might we design
on to your penultimate one, the seventh of eight. How am I in? I know. I might we design. And stop. So I think at this point, so here's one I did in the previous workshop, that's design sprint, the book this came from, is my today. Um, trying to figure out how we can, <laughs> all kinds of things came up. Um, I, in a minute, I'm going to hand this over to sort of Alicia uh, and sort of maybe get some of these sort of like, it, it's, it's quite unnerving doing things where you kind of put people into science. But when I did this on a previous call, it was like people were getting really insightful kind of how they needed to do stuff. So I kind of went with it. Um, <laughs> I hope that was the right decision um, and that you all got something. But the, the, the last trick with this I, is often to, to basically break them up. And there's the impact effort chart. And what you're looking at these is which one of these has the highest impact. So impact up and down, effort left and right. And you, you kind of take it across the grid and it, Kinley grid, I think. Um, you, you're looking for one of these thing, one of these kind of like ideas to be a solution that is easy to implement, low effort, but actually with a really big impact. You know, it might just be, actually, I need to update my website because it's out of date and people landing on it are seeing, are basically not going anywhere. You know, it's, it could be something that's, but then if you haven't got any design skills and that involves art, that's probably more effort, lower impact, and then you, it becomes a project. Um, so, um, pretty much at the end and nearly ready for some questions but just the final uh, part of it is deliver um and deliver isn't the finish deliver is only part of an iterative process so this knowledge and willingness to iterate is what the, makes the world's most creative people so creative and successful so iterative is where you get to the end of the process and it loops back in. So there was a slide earlier where the double diamond had a prototype and test. And this is where you, you can, whether it's like more professionally, like AB testing websites, with two designs, or even Mark does an awful lot of just posting ideas and seeing, you know, throwing shit at the wall and seeing what lands kind of thing. It, it's a great way of listening and a way of kind of, getting an interaction with your audience, actually seeing if people are interested in whether your product is going to be interesting before, um, 
yeah, before actually spending a lot of time doing it, it's the, the, pro the idea of prototyping rather than building the whole thing. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I mentioned Paul earlier, Paul Linden. I just wanted to sort of, I think, end with a final quote from him. Just, it just felt he, tying up though, that poor Jez and Dan Norman quotes, a person acting from the state of integrity will feel and take account of the existence of a world around him or her and act in ways that are peaceful, ethical and constructive. Greater sensitivity to, empathy with and compassion for oneself includes being sensitive to the condition and the needs and the feelings of people around you, the animals and plants around you and the soil, water and the air as well. It means feeling yourself as part of the web of life rather than separate from it. So yeah, I think I'm gonna stop sharing at that point. Um, and Thank you so much, Matt. We're getting so much feedback in the comments about how people never thought to use it in an everyday situation. It helped them teach hand, figure out ideas to teach hands off for their classes. Um, some folks are saying they had a lot of fun with it. So thank you so much for sharing that exercise with us and your time with us as well. I think there's one question that we all want to ask collectively of you is what's your top tip for embodiment? I think it's, it's understanding the process. Um, not sometimes you have to go backwards to go forward. Sometimes you, there's, there's a, I, I think in the body, there's a, a sense of rushing forwards and that movement to kind of deliver. And sometimes it's taking a step back and surveying that for me, as I think as, as, as understanding design through to embodiment is, is great. It's like, take a step back, come up with some ideas and then just start trying stuff out. So yeah, prototype. Fantastic. Um, Matt, I'm wondering if folks are looking to find you, where can they go? Is there a website? Is it social media? What works? Yeah, I'm I've actually not been on Facebook that much this week because I've got quite a lot of um, yeah stuff to do with the design. But um, I think, who doesn't don't know that it is MatthewShing.com, maybe there. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, so we put Matt's website in the chat, so you're all able to check that out. It'll also be in the description, so if you're watching this on replay, thank you, Matt, so much. If you're looking for other sessions in the Dancing Creativity channel, Valerie's is next in just about an hour, and hers is all on BioTango, so you won't want to check that. You won't want to miss checking that out as well. Um, lots of other sessions today. I know it's really hard to catch them all. Um, I know lots of things are all happening at the same time. That's definitely one of the reasons why I've been a volunteer is getting access to that juicy library. So make sure you also check that out. There's a link to upgrade that'll give you full access to any of the sessions. And for those of you who are asking as well, you can access Matt's session for free up to 48 hours. And you can also choose to buy the Dance and Creativity channel. There's so many fantastic presenters to explore today. And Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Alicia, for, yeah, beautiful hosting. And thank you for all the help on the design front, getting, <laughs> we've been working together on Canva and doing a bunch of stuff. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Have a fabulous day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.